Okay, um, in the last video, we have solved these first two integral problems, and now I want to finish the series by tackling these two integrals. So let's see, the first one we have is sine squared times the cosine squared of x. Let's look at that expression. Sine squared x, cosine squared x. And let's write this as 1 minus sine squared. And the reason for doing that is you multiply here, we have sine squared x. It's doing even power. In fact, we know how to solve that. Just with our formula here, you now have minus sine fourth of x, and we know how to solve that too because we did it in the last video. So the integral of sine squared x cosine squared x is equal to the integral of the sine squared of x dx minus the integral sine to the fourth x dx. And let's see, this one here, we use our formula, so this will be equal to one half the integral of one minus the cosine two times x dx. And this will be equal to one half x. We're just taking the integral of dx now. And we have minus one half. And the integral of the cosine of two x, that's plus the sine of two times x divided by two. So it looks like for the first integral that gives us x over 2 minus 1 4 times the sine of 2x. Then we have minus this integral right here, which we solved in the last video. That's why when we set these problems up, we said to do this problem, we have to do this one first. And that integral there, that came out to be equal to 3 eighths x minus 1 4 the sine of 2 x plus 1 over 32 times the sine of 4 x. So let's see, if we combine these together, what do we have? x over 2 minus 3 eighths x, 1 half x, that's the same thing as 4 eighths x, 4 eighths minus 3 eighths, we have 1 eighth x, minus 1 fourth the sine of 2 x, minus minus plus 1 fourth the sine of 2 x, it looks like these will cancel, and then we're going to have minus this term. And then that would be it for this integral here. Oops, we forgot our dx. Okay, and it just comes out to equal this. It was pretty uh, sweet and short, but the reason is this one here is pretty lengthy to handle, and we had already tackled that integral uh, in the previous video. So there's our answer for that integral. Let's take a look at the last one here. It's a little bit different than the rest. Here we have the sine of 4, sine to the 4th power of x, but it's in the denominator. So let's see. That is for this one here. Um, so we've got dx sine to the 4th x. Now, the sine squared of x is this. So the sine to the fourth of x would be this squared, so that would be one fourth times one minus the cosine of two x, and that quantity has to be squared, 
The problem, of course, though, this is going to be down here in the denominator. So using this approach here might not get us very far. So let's switch tracks and rewrite the problem as equals secant to the fourth x dx. Now, I may be hesitant to do that because you may not remember cosecants and cotangents too well. Um, what do we know about them? The cosecant squared of x, that's the cotangent squared of x plus 1. We know that. The derivative of the cosecant of x, I'll say the differential of it, that's equal to minus cosecant x multiplied by the cotangent of x dx. And the cotangent, its derivative, that is equal to minus cosecant squared x dx. That's about all we know, really. So let's see, can that help us with this problem here? Um, what if we draw the approach that we use the sines and cosines? We rewrite this as cosine squared x times, or cosecant squared x times cosecant squared x. And then for one of these, we we'll use our trig identity. So this would be equal to the integral of cotangent squared x plus 1 times a cosecant squared x ds. And the reason we're thinking that is we're going to be multiplying here across obviously which is going to give us cosecant terms and cotangent terms but maybe some of this will help us with what we need to do over here, some of these relationships. So let's see, we have two integrals. We have the integral of the cotangent squared of x times the cosecant squared of x dx. And then we have plus the integral of cosecant squared x dx. Um, oh, and this one here, we know right away, that's going to be the cotangent, or actually it's going to be not the cotangent of x, it's going to be minus the cotangent of x. If we take the integral of both sides, and we'll put the minus sign over here, integrate, integrate, the integral of d cotangent of x, that's just the cotangent of x, just like the integral of dx, that's just x. So we know this is going to be minus the cotangent. What about this one? Here we have cotangent squared cosecant squared of x. Um, but as we had written before, before I turn this into an integral problem, the differential of cotangent of x, that's the cosecant squared x with the minus sign before it. And that's what this is. So we should be able to set this one up too. Let u let u equal the cotangent of x. du will be minus the cosecant squared x dx or minus du is plus the cosecant squared x dx. And that's what this is. So this is just going to be the integral of u du with a minus sign out here. No, it's u squared du. u is the cotangent of x, so we have u squared here. And that's going to be minus one-third u cubed. But u is this. So this integral right here which is going to be minus one-third cotangent cubed of x. 
and that should finish us off then. We had this integral, which we wrote like this, and then we broke it into these two expressions. Then we used our identity here to get this integral, multiplied it out, and then once we did that, these two integrals we could handle right away. So finally then we could say that the integral of dx over sine to the fourth power of x that equals minus one third cotangent cube x minus cotangent of x plus an arbitrary constant. And that would be it. So that worked out pretty well for us, but for this problem here, where we had sine to the fourth x on this down in the denominator, we had to switch tracks and go along this line of thinking here, but once we did that, that set us up for these two integrals, which we could handle fairly quickly to get our answer. So, okay, that's it for this video. I hope that was worthwhile for you. And definitely, if you have time, come back and join us for some more videos, and we'll try and solve some more problems.